Hi, everyone. This is Raul with Failing with Style, the Failing with Style podcast. Joining me today is our illustrious co-host, Daisy. How are you doing? Good, good. How are you doing? I'm doing uh, well. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm learning. The older you get, the, the you learn to like censor your language a little bit. Okay. So when you used to be like, oh, I'm doing freaking awesome, bro. Yeah. Or, ah, oh, dog, I can't tell you. Like now, I'm just like, I answer things with a good or well. Like, that's my new thing. <laughs> it's hard to unlearn all of that. I, oh, dude. It's like uh, you learn all these cool things when you're in high school and you want to say them all and like you're the coolest kid in town. And then you get older and you get into the real world and you're like, how do I fix my language? <laughs> Because I'm still on that. I'm still saying, like, bro, and, you know, and I still, I mean, it's fun for me, but probably not the best professionally. It's tough. It's, it's something I have to relearn. Yeah. We'll Today, I, I got in trouble. You just brought up a thing I just remember. Today, uh, one of my coworkers, it was her birthday, and I had a lighter, so I gave him, a, like, a lighter, like a, like a big lighter. And... The coworker whose birthday was was like, Raul, you smoke? You have a lighter? I'm like, no, I just have a lighter. She's like, why do you have a lighter? And it's because we celebrate birthdays a lot here, so it was good to have a lighter around. It's like, what do you think? I'm smoking a spliff in the middle of my job? <laughs> and, then, and then she looked at me like, Doc, but how could you say that? I'm like, this is that doctor that knows me forever. She knows I'm joking. She knows I'm yeah. as they say. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's too much. Well, as you guys know, we're trying to make this a family-friendly podcast, so we are holding back our our, our cuss words, our sailor language, <laughs> our sailor language. Yar. <laughs> um. So, what are we? Let's start with you. I feel like every time. That we start this podcast, I mm. say my stuff first. So let's start with you. Um, I yeah. think the topic today was going to be about relationships and networking. Yes. yes. And um, I have my own stories about that, but I want to hear about yours. Yes. So uh, the older you get, the more you realize how important communication is in general. And just like developing good communication skills and stuff like that. So something... That not that I have trouble with, it's just I feel like I need to keep it as sharp as possible. Like something I need to always like have as the sharpest tool in my shed is my way to communicating. So, um, you know, we were just talking about last episode, it was a bunch of great wins, something bad's gonna happen, something's mm-hmm. coming down the pipe. Um, so three to four of the venues that I used to have shows with, I'm not having shows with. Because of various reasons, some of them they actually literally went out of business, or just like w- ways they commu- uh, they just don't want to communicate with, which is fine. I understand. I wish, I wish places would communicate with me more. I think, and I wonder is it because I give like a look on my face or my body <laughs> that uh-huh. like don't talk to Raul about this. Like I don't know. I try Are to be thin, like, walking around really angry or what. I think, <laughs> So, like, one of the venues I, I used to go very nervous to. So, I, I was always, like, I wanted to max out that room. So, it was always kind of, like, not fidgety, but I was always having, like, nervous energy. Mm-hmm. And I, maybe that connoted to that. So, speaking of relationships, you know, like, it's very hard to control your energy sometimes. It's one of the hardest parts of, like, being an adult is learning that your energy what you pro- you throw out there in the environment or wherever you're at that it's going to reverberate it's going to reverberate through your for me like if i go up nervous i'm most of the time the host of the show if i go up nervous on a show more and often than not the other comedians following me are going to go up nervous mm-hmm. so you or gotta, it's a trickle effect it is mm-hmm. it is so um recently i've had a like a great run of shows. I've had a great, great run of shows. So here is a good sign of communication and a good relationship I have. I have a show in Oakland Park in a beautiful venue that we do shows kind of like in their outdoor garden area, which is really nice. We get that show 30 or 40 almost every night of like people going to that show. It's a great, great show. A lot of people like going to because of like open mic is awesome. A lot of great comics turn up from the Broward area and the Miami area to there. So 
one of the comics, I was on another show. I was booked on another show that Friday, literally as far as hell, like from in Miami, in the heart of downtown Miami. One of the venue messages me, hey, we got a complaint about the show going on right now. Mm-hmm. They sent me an e- They sent me a screenshot of like an email of like what it was. And what it was was there was a topic that was brought up, ironically, by the cleanest comic that I had booked on that show. <laughs> Ironically, the yeah. cleanest comic I booked on the show brought up a topic that I guess these people, because they heard this topic being discussed, mm-hmm. thought it was like in a negative way or, or whatever. They they're very close to the subject of mm-hmm. this material that's being talked about. We can't talk about it. Um, no, we're still dealing with it. It well mm-hmm. it involved like it, it's a sensitive subject for many people out there. Um, so like. It involves two buildings. Happened oh, two years ago. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that subject was broached in this uh, joke, and the, apparently these audience members, um, apparently one of them were there at the scene of the situation, and did not feel like it was like the correct time to talk about it, even though it's twenty three years. Mm-hmm. But nonetheless. Uh, so they messaged me that they they messaged me that, and then I was like immediately I reached out to who was the host of that show. I told him to apologize. Thank God, I love this guy. The host of the show is one of my partners, and he's like really really good about like following my direction and like understanding that where I'm coming from is to protect everything, to protect the show, mm-hmm. to protect the venue, to protect the comedians. So I asked him like, hey, can you do me a favor? I know this is like uncomfortable, but can you go up to the owners of this venue and apologize for this comedian? And we know that the comedian was not. Honestly, when I heard the joke, I was like, this comedian is not on the wrong. This comedian, this is a good joke. It's a very mm-hmm. solid joke. It's a joke that's actually more personal about something, a situation of her, than it has anything to do with the event. Mm-hmm. And um, I think it's just that the audience misheard it. Mm-hmm. And that was the problem. But. Because I have that good relationship with this comedian, because I have this good relationship with that venue, everything is fine. Everything is okay. Nothing bad's going to happen. You know, can I ask you something about that? Because that's very interesting to me how, as a comedian, you have to know what boundaries you can or cannot cross. How do you even determine that? I mean... (laughs) <laughs> okay so that's is difficult <laughs> it is difficult it's it's you're basically walking a landmine a little bit mm-hmm. and not, not really sometimes some comedians don't care they go up and they think their material is a plus usda grade <laughs> USDA. Mean, amazing <laughs> material uh-huh. and but uh, it's an, a thing that i i believe in more now now the older i get you need to be able to read your audience you, be, you need to be able to Understand where your audience is coming from. Um, and you see your... I'm sorry, I'm trying to turn off the fan because I feel like it's coming in. Um, it, you need to be able to read your audience. Sometimes, one of the things I like doing is I like walking through the crowd. I like mm-hmm. hearing what people are talking about. And you can kind of get a feel of like what people are into and what they're not into. The other thing I do, I do this before every single show now. And actually, I alerted this host of this show. I'm like, hey, I'm really sorry to ask you to do this, but, but next time if you host a show, you have to alert people ahead of time. So now, before I start a show, I literally say, that, and millions of comedians will have heard me say this, hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to blah, 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 comedy show here at blah, blah, blah. Okay, we only really have two rules in this comedy show. And I go, everyone, you're going to use your neck right now. I want you to turn your head to the left. I want to turn your head to the right. We all want to have a good time, right? So that's like, hey, please don't be violent. Please don't be a jerk. Mm-hmm. We all want to have a good time, right? Let's keep it that way. The second rule I say, uh, and actually I put like a new a new swing on it. So I go, ladies and gentlemen, every single comedian coming up to you today, the, their profession is to tell jokes. Now, I'm going to hold out my mic. And every time I hold out my mic, I want you guys to yell out joke, okay? So, all right. What do comedians do? We tell jokes all right a joke i mean a is a joke if you take it more than a joke you are the <laughs> joke all right that's how my belief is uh-huh. um but i do alert <laughs> audiences beforehand yeah hey, we are going to touch sensitive subjects we are going to talk about a lot of things 
So if you're not comfortable with this, this is a great time to check out other parts of this venue, other things. You know, just know that every single comedian is coming up telling it just, just to make you laugh. There, there's mm-hmm. no, a lot of people think there's like, like it's personal. Or yeah. it's personal yeah. or there is, um, what's the word? There's like aggression behind. No, a lot of time we're throwing poop against the wall and we're just trying <laughs> to see what sticks. That's all we're trying to do. Yeah. We just want to make you laugh. That's all. And it's hard sometimes to read uh-huh. the whole room. Mm-hmm. Quote of the day. Here, you know what? Boom. Not, we don't have to do it at the end. We're doing it right now. Quote uh-huh. of the day. What's the quote of the day? The quote of the day is my, <laughs> one of my, is my favorite quote. If I ever have my comedy club, this quote is going to be painted on the wall right before mm-hmm. you walk in. Okay. It's a quote from his famous comedian named Patrice O'Neill. Patrice O'Neill, he wrote on uh, The Chappelle Show. He wrote for WWE for a bit. He wrote um, for a lot of different. He's a great, hilarious black guy. Great comedian. And his quote is, Bad jokes and good jokes all have the same birth. Mm-hmm. You can't control if it's going to be good or bad. All you can control is that you're trying to give birth to the idea that you want to make a person laugh. Mm-hmm. That's that's the the quote. I love that quote so much because it's the truth. It's the truth. The birth of the whole thought process of a joke is you want to put a smile on someone's face. You want to put happiness in someone's heart. It's not again to attack it's not to demean it's not to demoralize it's just to make you laugh and some people forget that and and comedy don't get me wrong comedians get mad sometimes they're like don't you know you're at a comedy show like there's actually a very <laughs> there's a very famous um story that happened this week mm-hmm. um that it was a comedian in new york and a lady kind of heckled and stepped on her joke and she's like you know what kill yourself like she literally said hey Mata, like kill yourself, mm-hmm. like. And, but she, the the problem with what that comedian did it. I don't have a problem with her saying that. If she said it jokingly, which we all understand, body language, we all understand, like the cadence of a person. When someone says like, "Oh, kill yourself," like jokingly, mm-hmm. you can understand that this lady right. did not do that. This lady Uh-oh. came with like, mm-hmm. fuerza, with mm-hmm. anger, and that was the difference. And that's why she's in trouble now mm-hmm. as a comedian. So, is it very hard? Oh my God! This is even a bigger story. This is a great topic. I'm sorry, I'm totally taking over this thing. But, um, there it was a Malaysian comedian. She did a joke in the New York Comedy Cellar. It's a really popular room, really big room. It was a really hilarious joke about about missing planes. <laughs> okay. Okay. And. Um, <laughs> I believe she's from Malaysia and Malaysia and Taiwan or Malaysia and another country, excuse me, have issues. They've had issues forever. So the joke is about the differences between the countries and like how one sucks and the other one's great, whatever. The whole Malaysian government, the whole country disowned her. Like oh they gosh. banned her from the country. They blew up the venue. They like started doing one stars on the on Yelp and everything on the venue. Like, wow. and I'm talking about Malaysian population. I'm talking about like mm-hmm. thousands and thousands mm-hmm. of one star reviews hitting a Yelp on this one venue. And they the girl had to put pull her her clip from li- from being online. Oh so it's it's one of those things that we take for granted a lot. I hate. I hate talking about this because it makes me feel like I'm a free speech warrior. But we take <laughs> for granted the beauty it is to live in our country and being able to say whatever we want. Even if we get in trouble, the whole country is not coming after you. Mm-hmm. You're not going to be disowned by the country. You're not going to be excommunicated from the country. It's one of those things I like. And, yeah, it has to do with people's sensitivities and stuff like that. And each culture, each person, we're all unique in our own way. And it's a dance. It's a delicate dance to try and make people It is laugh. so difficult. I mean, I, you know, if I can start in, um, start talking here. <laughs> 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 no, no. You, it was good. That, that was good. That was good stuff because I, I battle with this actually in my every day. And it's more of just speaking with people, you know, on a one-to-one basis. You never know what is going to offend somebody and what is not. And so I had I had like a long 
period in my lifetime where I was very worried about how I was coming off to everyone. And that still kind of creeps into me. And it's hard to do, I've noticed, because everyone has a different thing that they're offended by. So when I think about what is fair and what isn't, because I've had a lot of thinking about this. Like, I I talk to somebody and, you know, when I'm in my zone and I'm talking and whatever and I'm not worried about what anyone else is thinking, I may say something that this other person didn't agree with. I rather them tell me, like, hey, I don't agree with that, whatever. But, like, you don't have to make it into this whole big thing. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to ban me for your murder country. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, first of all, if you are in your mind all the time thinking about what everyone else is thinking, how everyone else is going to receive what you say, then you're never going to say anything. And I've been there. Like, you walk in between the lines and you're like, oh, I can't say that to that person. I can't. And you drive yourself nuts. <laughs> so that's why... I think that there are certain things, you know, like we were talking about, I think, the the previous podcast, the previous one that we recorded, like, I'm comfortable with that, so I'm okay talking about it. Someone else may not be, but just tell me. Like, do we have to make it into this whole big thing where, like, you're not my friend anymore, you know what I mean? Like, on that one-to-one level, can we just communicate and talk to each other and you tell me what you don't agree with and I tell you why I don't agree with it and then let's just agree to disagree and move forward, you know? I agree. I, I heard one thing, I forget who said this, but he was basically saying, like, uh, the truth comes from two arguments. And, like, if, you know, if the more you communicate about it, the more you talk about it, and you see where the other person is coming from, instead of just blatantly saying, no, I don't believe in that, how about you hear them out and see where they're coming from? Because, honestly, I don't think everyone's evil, you know? <laughs> and I even said, like, I, I communication is such a big thing because... Um, I'm about to say something, (laughs) but like, it's, I, I always say like, if the worst person on earth, let's just say Trump for now, right? Cause I, I I mean, there are other people, they, they think differently, but I say, I don't like that guy because of what he said, but if he were to just talk it out and talk to somebody about what he's feeling and how he's hurting inside, you know, and somebody were to just listen to him, I don't think he'd be such a bad person. Like, I think a lot of people, when they project outside and they're being mean and a bully and things come from malintent, I think it's that they're not being nice to themselves and they're giving it out to other people. So, yeah. That's that's where I stand. <laughs> no, I, I agree. But, um, here, I want to ask you a question because we're talking about like things, how we accept things that accept us or not, upset us or not. Mm-hmm. You're a huge Calvin Hobbes fan. You're mm-hmm. a huge Calvin Hobbes fan. More so my husband, but oh, yeah, okay. I love I love Calvin Hobbes. <clears throat> uh-huh. Okay, how, well, this is both of you. How do you feel about Calvin? The Calvin peeing on things <laughs> back um, because it kind of like connotes the wrong thing. Calvin's not like a jerk like that. He yeah. and everything. Yeah. But it's like one of the most famous bumper stickers of all time. Mm-hmm. So how do you guys, I would imagine that kind of upsets you, upsets you a little bit. Like how do you guys feel about that? Um, I, I, it never really upset me. That'd probably be oh. more of a question <laughs> for Eric. But I mean, if you're saying in the sense of like something I love that's very endearing to me yeah. and they use it in a sense that it's not used for, yeah. why should I take that personal? You know? I agree. I, like- I don't understand that. I it's and you know what? When I see that I'm taking something personal, I check myself because a lot of times it's something that I haven't dealt with. So like, for instance, I don't know, like I, I'd, there, there's times where <laughs> I get into arguments 
And I start to realize, I start to dial it back and I'm like, you know what? It's not really about this person. It's really what I've been through. And once I've dealt with what I've been through, I'm okay to receive it, you know? Like, it's not that big a deal anymore. I don't have to fight everyone about it. (laughs) I don't understand. I mean, I understand that there's topics that really hurt somebody, but maybe that's more of a call to action for you to explore that, you know? Yeah. And heal. It's just, <laughs> I agree a thousand percent with everything you said. I, you guys gotta realize everyone's unique. Everyone's unique. Everyone has a different perspective, different viewpoints, different feelings. For example, the greatest piece of artwork, I believe, in the world is Starry Night by Van Gogh. I believe that wholeheartedly. Mm-hmm. That is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life that has ever been drawn by any human being. Does everyone agree with that? No. Not even. There's some people who believe Sixteen Chapel is like the most beautiful thing in the world. Some people believe Mona Lisa. Some people believe, um, I don't know, eh, the burrito stuff is, <laughs> is pretty. You want to talk about something that yeah, offends my eyes? <laughs> I love the burrito. Please don't hurt <laughs> But there, you have to realize, unfortunately, in art, there are things that are tangible to some and there's things that are just not going to be tangible to others and that's okay there's more than three billion people on the planet earth you're going to have your audience you're going to have your people and that's ultimately what you have to do the only thing is i like to do again just to revert back to the shows really quick and like any i think our style kind of just hey be aware you're walking into a comedy show we're going to talk and broach subjects of an adult manner and with a cadence. Just know that everything here is fake. Everything here is a joke. And that's all it should be taken as. And please don't make it any further of a thing. Because people love saying the thing like, oh, there's truth behind jokes. Yes, there's truth behind jokes because we have to take real life information, process it, and turn it into a joke. So that's the truth. Yes, there has mm-hmm. to be things coming in here. But what's coming out is fantasy. <laughs> it's fiction. Fantasy. It's, it's, it's all poof. One of my favorite things that comedians do is they'll make up a person and then they'll look at an audience member like, oh, you like this person that I made up? I just killed her. <laughs> <laughs> it's made up. It's all made up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I also think about like, I don't know. I think there is so many heavy subjects out there. Um, And I honestly have to say that as long as it's not something like propaganda, you know what I mean? Because that can get dangerous. Yes. If you're not imposing your beliefs on anyone, then like, whatever. (laughs) That's how I feel. I don't know. I don't know. That's how I feel. You know, because I I think about, like, hate speech and things like that, and I I, that's like a, you know, I don't like that. (laughs) No, I mean, no one one likes, comedians especially don't like it. Yeah. And and artists in general like it. Look at how many beautiful pieces of artwork are used to create propaganda, to create, like, this propaganda machine, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I agree a thousand percent. The one thing I will say about like hate speech is intention is so important. Intention. Knowing tension mm-hmm. and context is so important. You can I can tell when I bring a person up on an open mic, for example. Random person. Person is the first time they're drunk, whatever, they want to go up and and perform. Or they want to go up and talk. I can see obviously the intention of a person. It's not that hard. Mm-hmm. Some comedians, yes, some comedians can write poetically and put their intention in like their work, but most of the time, again, um, much like art, like I think most, and I don't know, I mean, we could speak this more on your point. I think what art is meant to do is just to hold a person's like gaze. It's like man, meant to make you think. Mm-hmm. And a lot, of, a lot of comedy is meant to make you think. It's, it's meant to, you know, I, I, I get people get mad at me because sometimes I don't consider art uh, comedy an art form. I consider it a, a great comedian, great comedian Chris Lilio. I love this guy. He told me a great quote. 
comedy is not an art form. Comedy is a mathematical equation. It's this plus this equals laugh. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and it's true. In my mind, that's pretty true. It, is there artistry behind it? Is there like gimmicks and stuff? And yes, definitely. So maybe it's art. both. Maybe it's both. <laughs> Yeah, so talk- I, I think that was that was a very important um, point to make is the intention behind your uh, whatever art form you have um, in any profession, really, because you know when somebody is coming at you with some bad energy and you know when someone is coming at you with some good energy. So just learn how to make that distinction. Because if someone is saying something and you are focusing in on the words and not on their tone or their demeanor and you all you do is just go blindsided and hear whatever that person is saying, just the words, and you get triggered, like, let, let's be a little better about this, you know, because... Maybe they're not trying to hurt you. They're just trying to make a point or they're just trying to get their word across. Don't silence them, you know, Uh, because silence isn't good for anyone. We're human beings that need to talk to each other and sometimes it can get a little muddled. But make that distinction of like, is this person being good with their intentions or are they being bad? Because I think that speaks more volumes than the actual words itself. The only time you you should be silent is in a movie theater. (laughs) Yeah, turn your phones off. (laughs) Okay. And and it's because you're taking in information. You're taking in a movie. Yeah. Where do you see bad intention in like a drawing board or an art world? You know, I I consume a lot of good art. Art. The only reason I would see bad intention in artwork is if it's like... um, propaganda like if it's something that they're trying to push forward that has bad intentions then that is not good um i think if you have good intentions go for it because art is very uh loves to push boundaries you know and you have to be able to accept that you may not agree with it but that's why there's millions of other art forms that you can absorb you know um so I would just say like the I, I've never really seen or I don't look for that, so I haven't seen it, but yeah. um I have to say there are certain art forms or there's like certain movies that I don't agree with and I'll have my discussion about it with Eric and be like, I don't like this about that. I don't know <laughs> if that's the right thing to be saying, but <laughs> but people wouldn't have they have the freedom to express themselves. They're not trying to hurt anyone, you know. The only problem is if they're really trying to impose their ideas on somebody when somebody else has another idea, that's when it becomes a problem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree a thousand percent. How you so you know that um in the eighteen hundreds, I think, they try to censor the Sistine Chapel. Mm-hmm. They tried to paint over because it was all naked. Everyone was mm-hmm. naked. God, Peter, all everyone, not Peter, excuse me, Adam, were all naked. Um, and they tried to censor it. They literally painted over. They painted over Michelangelo. He went blind. He went <laughs> blind. I, the paint would fall into his eyes. The paint had let him yeah, in. Yeah. And it had blinded him. That's so and good thing it came so far for him. <laughs> 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 I mean, I guess it was worth it. Poor guy. <laughs> What is I, mean, yeah. I I always think about stuff like that about censorship and yeah, I, another topic is not well, even well, about well if I can touch on that slightly yeah. before we we uh, we go off, you know, I think the problem nowadays is that stuff is moving so fast that no one really like. No one understands what's good or what's wrong or what they can accept or what they can tolerate because this is like the world wide web. You know what I mean? So there is a lot of topics that you've never heard of before coming at you and things that you haven't even had time to process. So I would just say like have just like you do have like um, a discretion. This is what's going to be showing in this. You know what I mean? And so just prepare for that. 
<laughs> these topics are going to be covered. So just prepare and be okay. And if you're not okay, leave. <laughs> you know, it's that simple, I think. I, I believe it is. No. Um, but that's just how I am. I, I do like warning people because I understand sometimes you're walking into a comedy show and there's a various amounts of com- different comedies. There's there's like sketch, there's like slapstick comedy, there's physical comedy, there's stand up comedy, there's a there's a variety. There's a mm-hmm. variety. And um is one of the reasons why I do that. So it was a learning moment for me in a in a sense that like, hey, I just gotta do this all the time. Like not, not even think about it. Um and it's gonna make everyone's life better in the end. Yeah. And it strengthens our relationships there you go (laughs) full circle communication (laughs) is key (laughs) really though i mean (laughs) communicate to you this is what it's about and you are going to receive that communication and do what you want with it uh where can the nice people find you ro Oh, um, the nice people can find me at R D H I T O. My name is taken, so I couldn't. Oh no, I can't do Raul Hernandez. You so can't I, like uh, text him or something and tell him, "Hey, it was my name first. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> so I'll figure it out. I'm. A, I have been thinking because I, I hate that my like the two numbers are at the end and stuff like mm. that. So I'm gonna work on it. Where can the nice people find you though? I'm at Daisy Vesiana. Uh, find me on LinkedIn, Instagram, or else Facebook. We're trying to get the Facebook up, guys. Trying to get we'll the Facebook get up. There. We'll work on it. Daisy's actually been doing a lot of great work. She's been doing the reels and stuff like that lately. Very proud of her. Very thank awesome you. Stuff. Thank you. And if you guys have any questions, concerns, anything that you are failing with and would like to talk to us about, if you can email us or leave a comment we will get back to you and we'll showcase it on the show i hate saying this because this is a bad form of communication i haven't checked that email <laughs> oh my gosh oh my i God. check it guys like 50 submissions that we have no 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 i don't know that anyone's listening if anyone's people listening listen. people are listening we got we got an extra follower today i thought uh, all right yeah, all right we'll see listening. thanks guys all right take it easy homies Bye-bye. Right, bye bye bye